Well, welcome back to another episode of the wonderful The Arsenio CSL Podcast, man. I just want to give a big special shout out to everyone I've reduced. Obviously, you may already know I've reduced the schedule to just Tuesday, Thursday, and weekends. And it's because, you know, I, I don't know. I just told myself, you know what? I think, you know, the seven days a week is just, I've been doing that for a long time. And I think this podcast will be able to maintain its little fire. Uh, and so I think thankfully, probably over the last week, um, because I finally reduced it, although the numbers did go down pretty low to what they used to be, you know, getting 33, 34, 35,000 a month in terms of plays, it being just reduced like almost by half, no, probably about by 30%. But now it seems like it's beginning to climb back up and I'm I'm now averaging about 700 to 800 plays. Uh, it took about two months to get it, but you know, I am just so grateful. Big shout out to everyone and uh, for listening to me, of course. So here we go, people. We're going to be listening to a couple of things today. Now, remember, we already talked about report. I gave you my feedback and everything, right? And so what happens here is we're going to listen to a director from a head office in the U.S. talking to an HR manager of a subsidiary in Southern Europe about a new teleworking policy, okay? So here we go. How does each person talk to one another? Describe their voices. Is it, are they high, low, loud, soft, clear, husky? Now imagine if there was a video of the meeting. What do you think Jacob and Helena would look like? Describe their body language. So are they relaxed or tense? Leaning forward or backward? Arms together or apart? Are they gesturing with the hands or the head? Is it expansive or small, restricted? These are a number of things that we're going to be listening to in two sides of these, um, and on two sides of the equation. So we have one where the guy from America is going to come in and just be a typical American. Big shout out to all my Americans, no offense. But, you know, they like to come in and they like to demand and do a lot of different things. And then the second one, she is going to be a little bit more straightforward and bold. So we're going to be listening to this and we're going to be diving right into what we got. So here we go, people. Audio number one. Let's do it. Come in, sit down. It's um, Helena, isn't it? Jacob Sanders. I think we already met. Um, thank you. Yes, in Chicago, but it was, um, several years ago. Did you... did you have a good flight? Yeah. Well, Helena, you know why I'm here. We want to get this teleworking policy implemented as soon as possible. Yes. Well, would you like some coffee or tea? No, I'm good to go. Um... Well, as you know, I am. Um, I spoke to Harry Stross about the special circumstances here, and Harry's just transferred to South America. Actually, look, Ellen, um, <laughs> Helena, <laughs> I won't beat about the bush. This is a global policy. Head office don't like exceptions, and it's my job to make sure that we don't have any. I understand. Um, it's just that people here don't really like the idea of working from home. And um, not having their own office anymore is quite upsetting for people who've been working here for years and years. So which part of the policy is it they don't understand? I mean, it's not as if they were losing their jobs. We just want them to work from home three days a week. Most folks in the States are really happy with it. It's just that... I'm sorry? Oh, uh, nothing. Ah, you see that? Very demanding. If he were to say, I'm sorry, I'd be like, excuse me, I didn't finish. As a matter of fact, sit down. I'm going to have to school the hell out of you. See, the thing is, when you come in very verbato, you come in with brashness. And you come in, you know, like the head honcho beating your chest like you're the shit. I'm going to make you feel very small. Thank goodness I haven't had to deal with people like that in more than four years. Uh, very grateful. The only other people uh, I've had to deal with is in a podcast you may have heard. Uh, there was a Costa Rican dentist who I had taught before, and this guy was very, very egotistical. Didn't want to learn. Didn't want to f- 
think and how to think outside the box or anything. He just kept saying, oh, I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know how. Motherfucker, you need to ask yourself how. Jesus. So in saying that, when you come in to an office, and again, I'm guessing he knocked on the door. He walked in. He mispronounced her name. Elena. Oh, Helena. Ha, ha, ha. So when you listen to her, she, her voice, her breathing is shallow. Her voice is slow. No confidence. Very hesitant. She's tense. She's allowing him to be the very big in the room. And that is just a no. I mean, I don't give a damn what culture. I'm sorry. I don't give a damn what culture. But I'm always the person who looks at everything as equal. And if you're that person that comes in and you just feel like you are the best and you are making demands in the head office, okay, over here, over there, I don't give a fuck. In the States, they're pretty well with that now, given the fact that COVID has already happened. Yes, they're still very good with that. I teach the worldwide, uh, the worldwide, uh, worldwide vision foundation of Thailand, which is one of the most, in, the most incredible uh, nonprofit organization um, in the world. I would have to say uh, to see the unbelievably profound work that they're doing in the small rural areas of Thailand is un, it's just unbelievable, and I'm just so grateful for them. And they're teaching me a lot about the foundation. I want to ultimately start too. But nonetheless, in saying that, I know that they have to deal with people who have that type of ego. And, you know, and considering that, you know, being here in Thailand, there are people who just feel like that they could come into a room and they could just be very demanded and think that their stairs are going to, you know, deviate me away from who I am. And I'm going to give you this last story. I'm going to give you this last story. I'm getting a little bit off the beaten path. But I had to give a presentation in regards to the conversation work, uh, conversation class I developed at a tutorial center in early 2016. The lady in Bangkok already said, and we already have this on record, that she did not like Black teachers. Right? So when I went to Bangkok, she comes into the room, and I'm just like, okay, who is this little short hair? You, you know, although I love women with short hair. But I was like, okay, who is this Manupaz, what we would call them out here in Thailand? Just a, just a racist old woman, Right? And she sits in and I'm looking at her. I'm like, huh, so you don't like black teachers? Watch me. And obviously me just completely de de like demolishing all the other teachers at all the other tutorial centers. And she had the audacity to ask me at the very end, well, how do we get teachers to teach us? None of our teachers would. And I was like, well, that's because you hire based on color rather than the necessities. Uh, you know, hate to tell you, but you know, um, if a teacher can't teach conversation, because he's senile and he's cynical, then why did you hire them to begin with? Oh, because they're white. See, that's your issue right there. Just telling you the stuff, just telling you the truth. So funny that how the opinions had changed. I did that presentation at that specific tutorial center. I had to go all the way to the other side of town to do another presentation. Got paid very, very well for both of them. And uh, it's so great being able in 2016 uh, in the last year that I suffered from a lot of racial discrimination out here in this country to go in and to go in with confidence, not to be overbearing, but to go in with confidence and using my gestures. Now, nothing on the scale of what I do today. Today, I'm a master of that craft. You know, I was just in the beginning stages back then. Um, the voice, obviously slower, keywords and phrases, emphasis. These are the different things that how to build rapport with people going back to the previous podcast. So based on how he ended up coming in, he came in probably hands crossed together. Okay. You know, he was probably gesturing with the head because that shows, I mean, it shows a little disrespect to be honest with you. Um, you know, facial expressions, probably very negative, closed. Uh, I would have to say, that his, the breathing was probably more fast, if anything, very confident. And these are some of the things that you would have to focus on. So what could she have done to do better? Like, what could she have done better? Well, probably mirroring, pacing, or leading in regards to adapting your gestures with their gestures, their posture with your, or your posture with their posture, the expressions they use with you know, with the, I'm sorry, the expressions you use or he uses and you adapt in those, his voice adapted, you know, and that's what I would do. If he came in 
and he said, I'm sorry. And I'm saying, excuse me, please don't interrupt me. Please do not interrupt me. I probably wouldn't say it the second time, but I would just say, whoa, you're trying to impose your will on me. You better take a step back. Get your ass slapped in the face. <laughs> but anyways, it's saying that don't slap people. Don't slap people. But what I try, you know, the, the, what he was trying to do, he was trying to be very manipulative. He was being very insincere, a lot of different things. So now we're going to listen to a second version of this and see how well she does this time. All right. Hi, Helena. Jacob Sanders. Hello. I don't know if you remember me. We met in Chicago. Yes, of course I remember you. It was the conference with that awful team building day, wasn't it? Yeah, what a disaster that was. <laughs> anyway, how are you? Did you have a good flight? Not too bad, thank you. But I have to say, the Atlantic seems to get wider every time I cross it. Yes, it's a long flight, isn't it? Maybe you should consider teleworking. Aha, touche! <laughs> but you know why I'm here, Helena. We want to get this policy implemented as soon as possible. Yes. And would you like some coffee or tea? Yeah, a cup of coffee would be nice. Thank you. So, did Harry Strauss fill you in on our special circumstances here? Yeah. But you know, Harry's just transferred to South America, don't you? So I'm taking over where he left off. I won't beat about the bush, Helena. This is a global policy. Head office don't like exceptions. And it's my job to make sure that we don't have any. I understand. And let me reassure you on that point. I'm confident that we can bring people round to the idea. It's just that we're going to need a little more time. All right, so bring people around to the idea? Have a little bit more time. She was saying it with more confidence this time. By the way, I do not understand why Americans just say touche in the middle of sentences. What he meant to say is because she said maybe you should consider teleworking and obviously this is what it's about and that's exactly why he's here. So she hurry up and threw out a gambit that he could bait on to go straight into what he was doing there because she's like, man, I don't want to waste no time with your ass. I want you in and get the fuck out. That's how quick it was, okay? Now, I would have to say she related. Did you have a good flight? Okay. And then, obviously, he's like, and it's my job to shut up. Some people are just so funny. And she's like, yeah, I'll be me. I'll be like, okay, obviously, yeah. Like, like, what are you trying to get at? And it's my job to da, 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 da. Yeah, you've been upgraded. You are taking his job way too serious. And you're doing a very piss poor job. But at the same time, I'm like, hey, listen, we're just going to have to get around to, uh, you know, teleworking in general doing three days a week probably a little bit too much we could do one day a week and then we'll expand on that after a month how does it sound thank you goodbye have a wonderful flight back that's how i would do people <sighs> there are different techniques if you would have to say but she matched his same energy she probably she matched his pace in regards to the conversation the lead in regards to leading to different topics one after another so in order for you to be able to establish that confidence and establish your ground when you're speaking to other people, and I get it, you know what I mean? Like, you, you know, if we look at this and, you know, they're a subsidiary in Southern Europe and, you know, HR manager over here. And I'm like, dude, even HR, especially in HR in America, man, dude, they could be the absolute worst. I don't know, unless somebody has an HR manager out there in America and you listen to me who is just amazing. Man, I got fired my second day from work with a guy who, who I thought he was actually very, very nice. Fire me. Oh, thank God he did that. That office was absolutely atrocity. Um, but yeah, just letting me go after literally hiring, hiring me on. And I'm just like, oh, I should have quit this job when I got that call going to an interview. And so me, I'm just like, eh, whatever. But considering all the things, when you're dealing with the HR manager, they like to impose that will. I'm going to give you this last one. I used to do workshops with KTB, Phung Thai Bank, one of the biggest banks, obviously, out here in Thailand, government bank. And while doing these workshops, the first time I did the workshop, there was a very, 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 uh, I would have to say, oh, man, a very tough type of HR officer. I've talked about this on my podcast before. She was older. However, there were three that were much younger than her, but she would, she could be very bossy at times. You know, we call her a manupa, a grumpy old bitch. 
is what she was. And so while obviously doing these, you know, doing this and the first time I did the workshop with them, she wasn't there the second or the third time. Uh, this was uh, the end of 2019, then the end of 2020. And then I stopped doing workshops because they just do not pay me for what the money is worth, to be honest with you. But nonetheless, in saying that, um, you know, they at, when she was there and I was speaking and doing things, well, my associate was in the back and she was like hitting her watch. And I was like, what? She's like, oh, well, the HR wants them to speak, not you. And I'm like, HR could just shut the fuck up and stay in her lane. OK, it's so funny how they want you to just speak very minimal. And then next, you know, the students have no idea what to do. And the next, you know, you're a bad trainer. I'm like, you bitches got to get the fuck out of my face with that shit. Let me do my thing and stay the hell out of my way. And this is someone who, again, likes to impose wills. Luckily, she wasn't there anymore. The other two HR ladies who were like ex-flight attendants and stuff like that, they were unbelievable. Saw them for the last time in like uh, just a day after Thanksgiving in 2020. And they were just amazing souls. They really were. They were so down to earth. They were so lovely. They would ask me different questions. Would you like a tea? Would you like a coffee? And I'm like, see, this is the new generation of HR. And I've met a lot of new generation of HR. But when you deal with older generations or egos, they end up becoming very difficult. Remember, dealing with that ego, a graduate from UCI, Back in 2017, being at a company that I chose that I did not want to go back to, but I was forced to go back to because this British teacher really wanted me gone and he just wanted to find an excuse to how he could get rid of me. I remember the second day I ended up getting unofficial feedback saying, oh, he uses his arms too much. He does this. He does that. He does this. He does that. I said, what? I tried hurrying up and quit. And I said, you bitches got to stay in your lane. And to be honest with you, you guys are already undeserving of me. I'm only here because I've been forced to come here. And I'm just so grateful, given the fact that that was half the half decade ago, that I don't have to take bullshit like that anymore. The last time I've dealt with people who are really bossy, that was probably what, back in 2019? And now I'm just like, uh, no, y'all stay the hell away from me. And to be honest with you, y'all just, you guys, th that price that you're giving me, I got students online that pay me more than that because I'm spurring them on to success. So anyways, that was a little bit of a rant off the whole report thing. But man, to be honest with you, I hold my ground. I'm like, hey, you know what? Just keep all your comments and bullshit to yourself. I want to know what the students say. I don't give a fuck about what you may think what I should do. You just stay in the back, look like the person, whoever you are, let me do my thing and let me get out of here. It's funny because later on that year, they gave me another one. And the following year, they gave me another one. Too much work though not enough pay and me i'm just like eh, i'm good and so with that being said people wow what a podcast what another day and i'm so grateful to have you guys here today with me so with that being said stay tuned for more we got a workplace scenario coming up soon over and out